Skin of the Hey, what are you getting? Uh, raisins. Don't get the raisins. Get the chocolate covered raisins. Uh, I like raisins. Get the chocolate covered raisins. They cost the same. You get more for your money. Let me think about it. Okay. Hey, hey, hey what are you getting? I'm gonna get some chips. Get the chips with the onions on it. I don't like onions. I but you get onions chips. and chips, and they cost the Eight same amount of money. Five. I'm getting. Hey, this fine. This don't listen to my advice. No, don't listen to my advice. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. What are you doing? Molly, I'm teaching people how to be good consumers. It's one thing to be a good consumer. It's another thing to be obnoxious. Come on, we got a show to do. consumers, but first, Steve's got some cheap thrills for you in the back. What are you doing, Steve? Okay, Molly, we're backstage with museum educator Peggy Vale, and today she's going to show us something that we're going to call cheap thrills, what they are, games that people used to play before they could go out to a toy store and buy something. So what do you have for us now, Peggy? Well, I'm doing Cat's Cradle, and I'm making a fish spear, one of the many string figures made by people from around the world, and it usually is used to tell a story, and that's how people pass on a lot of the oral traditions. Okay, so we have some storytelling games, and we'll be back with more later on in the So you're just dying to send away for the world's largest tweezers, right? Or you've got to write a check so that you, too, can be the only one to get electric goldfish. Well, before you go breaking open your piggy bank, you need to talk to our next guest, Dick DiBartolo, who's going to teach us about how not to get ripped off through the mail. That's exactly right, Ma. <laughs> you know what? When you see an ad, what you get may not be what you expect. So we're going to look at some ads, and then I'm going to show you what you get. Had you sent your money? Here they are. They stand 24 inches tall. They're seven gigantic dinosaurs. They're only $2.98 plus a buck or two shipping and handling. So I sent my money, and the envelope came. Inflatable toys. And open. the seven giant dinosaurs giant? are in here because mm. they are indeed... Little oh, balloonos. Geez. This is what those guys look like. Inflatable, Inflatable treacherous, toys. dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> not even attached to the, the head is not. I think prehistoric dinosaurs weren't attached, but I'm not it's sure. Floating That's it. <laughs> okay, let's things. look at another ad okay. here. Ah, electric train set. Only five dollars. Three dollars shipping and handling raises the price by sixty percent. Oh. It's thirty-two pieces. You send your money. You get the box. You open the box. Well, it doesn't look like the picture. Also, there's not. 32 pieces. Why not? Because this is most of the pieces. Oh, the cardboard. Geez. You have to cut them out. Each one is a piece. And that makes it bad. Really oh, disappointing. That's a drag. Okay, now let's okay, look at another one. ad. Crawling Chrissy. I wanted this desperately <laughs> oh, for my collection. Oh, she looks cute. She's 10 bucks. She's $3 shipping and handling. So I sent my money and I got Crawling Chrissy. Now cute the, and cuddly. Yeah. <laughs> Three, uh, three quarters of a foot tall? I think not. Mm. Let's take a peek. Oh, uh, now you have to push her tush because... Oh, no! There you go. She had a little little battery <laughs> trouble, okay? Mm, I, all babies crawl like that, don't I they? I know. And, oh. you know, it's not exactly cuddly, as the ad says. Now, as we design some ads, we're going to mm. show the ads and let the kids guess what it might be. So you can be informed consumers. That's it. Ad okay. number one on the magic Guys, side. Guys, yes. You don't have the shops you drop. You can order nifty products from Crazy Garnells, like our Miracle Sea Plant. It magically expands to giant size. And it makes liquid disappear. Order now. I need this. A magical a sea, plant sea plant makes water disappear, swells to giant proportions. Giant what could that proportions. be? Wait, what do you think it is? A sponge? A napkin? A napkin? Yeah, it could be, but it's not a sea creature. Steve has I someone over the there. Yeah, oh, here. Sorry. What? I think we have the answer over here. A sponge? That's it. A sponge. It <laughs> swells up. And when they say giant, whose definition of giant? When this swells with water, it's not really giant. Oh. Okay, now let's look at another ad. Back okay. to the screen. Mom, kids, goldfish. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Get out of your wallet. Send some new crazy garnel for the deal of a century. We've got valuable antique artifacts, historical treasures with mysterious portraits of mighty rulers. Order now. 
Ooh, wow, historical Maybe coins. coins. Ancient rulers, Ancient yes. Ancient rulers. Round paper stamp? Mm, that stamp? could be. a good that guess. Could be. That's a good guess. But this, this is old, old. Old stuff. Old yes. stuff. Oh, uh, checker pieces. Checker pieces? No, Ooh, no, 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 no ancient rules on them. Like a pin that you put on your shirt? No, one more oh, guess. let's show them, let's show them. They are just plain old coins. And the rulers were past presidents. Oh, Lincoln and look at that. Jefferson. Isn't Jefferson on the nickel? Yeah, these are, are really ancient? ancient, too. 1980 and 1984. Whoa. Those are old, oh, ancient coins. But I want them for my collection. you got to have them for your collection. <laughs> okay, we have they one look old. more ad. And let's take a look at that. Boys, one. girls, countrymen, lend me your money. Because I've got deals, deals, deals. Look at this fabulous box of chemicals. Miracles of Bible elements. You can't live without it. Order now. Boxo I like chemicals the fine print, $40 shipping. shipping. Always Ooh, check print. the fine print. Boxo chemicals. I think we got the answer right here. Yes, knows, knows what it is. Air? Air, that's exactly right. That. Boxo chemicals. It's full of air. Can't live without it. Him. $40 for shipping. And handling. Check the small print. That's the thing. You got to, you, if you don't Check read the, the small print, make sure the ad says dimensions. Most ads don't. So you have no idea what size it is when you see a little tiny picture of something. And the most important thing, and I want you to have a pencil to write this down. If it looks too good to be true, it probably is because companies are not in business to lose money. Mark mm. my words. As a matter of fact, I'm going to mark my mark words. Mark your words. Right now. Companies my are not in business, business to lose, lose money. money. So basically what you've got to do is you've got to read the small print, look at the and think about it. That's Don't right. just and, go And make sure you add in the shipping and handling that often raises the price by 50, 60, 70 percent. Oh, boy. Well, thank you very thank much. You. We, we, we feel so much time. more informed now. And you're not going to make any of those mistakes, are you? No. No way. Don't you go away. We'll be back after these commercial messages. Turn after these commercials. Now back to KTV. Okay, we're back with some more cheap thrills. What do we have this time, Peggy? What are these guys playing with? They're playing Hunt the Ring, and it's a ribbon. You can get it from home, or you can go buy the ribbon. And they have a key ring on there. You need one ring. Don't use your parents' wedding ring, hopefully. And um, Aaron's going to be the hunter. Aaron's he's going to find the ring. Okay, he's going to go hunt the ring now, Aaron. Go ahead. This was played in the late 1800s. No. Um, Karen. No. Wow. Didn't make it. Yeah. Wow. Good Better luck next time. Yep. Okay, we're going to have some more cheap thrills a little bit later on in the show. Stay with us. Who's starring in the movie that you're dying to see? Is it Arnold Schwarzenegger, Whoopi Goldberg, or is it a brand of soda? Let's watch this report about products in the movies and then see what you think about it. In Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, those pizza-loving creatures have some delivered to their sewer home. What kind do they order? Domino's. Why? Because the Domino's company paid the movie makers so they would show their pizza, and not just any pizza. And when Reese's Pieces Candies appeared in E.T., it was because Reese's paid for it. So many people saw E.T. that Reese's Pieces became much better known, and many more people bought them. This is a form of advertising called product placement. It's placing products in the movies. Want a Coke? It's become common, but some people, like Jill Savitt, say it's wrong. When you see a commercial, you use your judgment. You, look, you watch what they have to say about the product and you decide. When it's in a movie, it's very sneaky. You don't know that that's in there because someone paid to put it in there, that it's a commercial that, that's almost like any other commercial, except that for there's no break. No one's told you that they're trying to sell you something, and so you're not as careful. People who think product placement is wrong say advertising should never be hidden. They also say product placement changes the way movies are made. Scenes and lines are sometimes rewritten to include a product. Some movies are so full of products now, they don't look realistic. But people who do product placement say movies need brand name products to look real. And there's nothing wrong with paying to make it one brand instead of another brand. Joe Allegro works for a company that arranges product placement. Rather, we just want to portray the product in its natural setting. First of all, they're not trying to sneak their product in. It just happens to be an opportunity for them to show their product. Uh, if instead of it being brand X, it could be brand Y. And why not be brand Y? 
People who think product placement isn't a problem say it makes movies more like real life. Everyone knows about it. It's not really hidden. It helps pay the high cost of making a movie. Both sides are now talking about a compromise. An announcement before the movie would list the products that paid to be included. What do you think about it? Well, what do you think? Iris was just talking about a movie that she had seen. What movie did you see? Blue Jack City. And what was the product in there? They had Air Jordans, they had Nikes, they had Reeboks. Oh, they had all different types of shoes. Did that make anybody want to go out and buy those certain I, shoes? I bought a pair of Jordans. Because, because it looked good on, the, on that particular person. Do you think it's fair to do that? I don't think it's fair, but if, well, if it all depends. If the person looks good in it, then you buy it. I don't think it's fair for the young children. For the oh, for the children yeah, that are yeah. that are younger that may not be able to distinguish like you can. Exactly. Well, do you think that you ought to be informed that it's a commercial in there, or do you think they're sneaking this on it on you? Anybody over there with Steve think they're sneaking on you? Who thinks who thinks they're sneaking up? You think you're, they're sneaking these commercials on us? Yeah, I think that if you're going to watch a movie, you should just watch the movie and not like commercials that they're sneaking up on you. She doesn't like being bombarded by the commercials. Who, what about the, in the tape it said it might make it look real, might not make it look real? Do you think it looks more real if there are real products in a movie? I think it makes things look real because people in real life really do use these things. So when you put it in the movie, most people really don't pay attention to it because this is what they use. What about your subconscious? Do you think it plays on your subconscious mind that when you go into the store, you're going to buy something that you wouldn't normally buy because you saw it in a movie? Over here. You got to... Um, I think it might because if they see one of their favorite people using this, but it might not because if they have a product they already like, then they're probably going to stick with it. Does anybody think it's really not a big deal? What do you think? It doesn't matter because people are going to buy what they want to buy, what they like, not what someone else wants. Okay. What about the compromise they said in the movie? Do you think that they ought to start the beginning of the movie with a list of products that you're going to see in the movie? because if you don't then you'll know it's really your subconscious working at you and you're not gonna have to go out and Who buy your said no you said no I don't think they should show the products that's going to be seen on it okay well not in the beginning of the movie not in the beginning of the movie well we're out of time now but now that you're aware of this stuff you can keep track of it next time you go to a movie count the number of products that you see Steve when you see something in a store that you really really like sometimes it's hard to resist well, you got the case of the gimmies. Well, this week's Do It has a cure. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Four gimme, things to do gimme, when you gimmies. Gimme. Is it a fad? Ask yourself what it would be like to own the product. Would it be as valuable as it first seems? Gimme, gimme, gimme. Or would it just be a fad item that would collect dust on the shelf? Is it a celebrity endorsement? Ask yourself if the product would really increase your glamour or popularity. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Would it really make you like the person in the advertisement? Is it a sale? Sale items can always get the gimme, gimme juices gimme, flowing. Gimme. Blue light special. Electric nose pickers. But remember, a sale is only a bargain when you need the item. If all else fails, try the walk away three day delay. Leave the gimme, store. Gimme, gimme, Come back gimme. three days later. When you have time to think about it, Sometimes you realize you don't need it as much as you thought. So be your piggy bank's best friend and kiss the gimmies goodbye. Goodbye, gimmies. Did you know? How many TV commercials do you see in a year? KTV will return after these commercials. Back to KTV. How many TV commercials do you see in a year? An average of 30,000. We're back with some more cheap thrills. Peggy, what is the history of this game here? Okay, this is called marbles. It dates back to about 4,000 years ago in ancient Egypt, they think. And the purpose is to shoot as many marbles outside of the ring as you can, and that way you get to keep the marbles. So the more marbles you have, the better off you okay, are. Okay, let's see. <laughs> Give it a shot. Ah. Well, we have to do it again. Well, nobody scored any points here, but all these games that we saw today on KTV can be found in a book called Games of the World. It's published by UNICEF. I suggest you check it out. Speaking of and commercialism, who knows baseball? Who knows football? Who knows hockey? Who knows? Who don't know diddly? Oh! That's 
That's right. Our reporter, Donna Vieira Gomez, went to Chicago to meet Bo Jackson. Hi, guys. I'm here at the Sporting Club in Chicago, and I'm about to go in for a workout. And I thought I'd introduce you to my personal trainer, Bo Jackson. One thing that we do every day, right before we play, is we stretch our muscles like this. She can get down farther than I can. <laughs> I don't get, she can. <laughs> I think she's had enough. <laughs> I won. Bo Jackson is definitely an amazing, multi-talented athlete. Since high school, he has been a superstar player in both football and baseball. He also plays himself in secret commercials and a new video about his life called Bo Knows Bo. But can he play basketball? Well, better than me anyway. Foul, 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 foul. I gotta go to the line, that's a foul. She fouled me, right? You're cheating, I'll get one. Your old coach, Dick Atchison, said you were shy in high school, yet you seem to be very outgoing now. What do you think made the change? I had problems with my stuttering, and I seldomly talked when I was out in public, and I guess people took that as being shy. But as I've gotten older, I've learned how to control it, and I don't worry about it. And uh, I'm able to um, do things now that I wasn't, that I was scared to do when I was younger. I don't see just how they play. <laughs> Everyone loves the bonus commercial. Since I'm sure a lot of companies ask you to put your name behind them, how do you choose which ones to endorse? Uh, we sit down and talk and go over the legal matters of it. And if it's something that I'm not comfortable with, I just say, I'd rather not do that. Your home video, Bono's Bow, is coming out soon. Could you tell us a little about it? It really tells you about my life, from how I grew up, how I was raised, the type of kid I was, the type of teenager that I was. And Bo's mom wanted Bo to go to college to get a degree. She said, People can always take away your fame and money. But uh, education always lasts forever. And don't you ever forget it. That's exactly what she said. And now the type of man that I am. So, um, it's just a story of my life. It's, you are uh, here straight from the horse's mouth. You were always a talented athlete. I'm interested in sports, but nobody ever told me I was good. Do you think there's still hope for kids like me? <laughs> Of course. The only thing that you have to do is have faith in yourself. Um, don't ever let anyone tell you that you can't do something or you're not able to do something. Um, because uh, it's not fair for someone else to make up your mind for you. You have to go out and you have to do what you're capable of and don't worry about anything else. This is Donna Vera Gomez for KTV. <laughs> KTV will be back to these commercials. Now, back to KTV. What kind of principal doesn't work in a school? The kind that you pay off when you're done paying the interest. Huh? Well, you can learn more about money and finance in the Kids' Money Book by Neil Godfrey. The wampum bags, the bohemian powers, to the good old dollar bill. Learn about money of the past and how to save your money now in the Money Book by Elaine Wyatt and Stan Hinden. You can watch your dough rise in the bank that comes with the book. All right. So maybe you can't afford an atom smasher and you're really not ready to make that big investment for a new particle accelerator. Well, Steve Tomchek is here to talk about dirt cheap science, experiments that are easy and inexpensive to do. Steve? Thanks, Steve. You know, when you go out and you look around, there are a lot of stores selling some really cool things. And some of these work on very simple scientific principles, like uh, the wave machine. The problem with a wave machine like this costs like 10 or 15 dollars. And it, it really is something simple to build, and it works on a principle that we call density. 
So density is the, the key element here. Density. density. Density, okay. And what we have is two fluids, one of them, the blue one at the bottom, and the clear one up on top. And these two fluids have different densities, and they're separated because of this. Now, uh, we could build one of these really cheap for under a buck. Uh, Linda, you want to come sure. on? We have our assistant, Linda. This is basically on the oil and water don't well, mix, Well, exactly. Right? I was we're just going to get in here. And, Linda, what we're going to do is we have an old soda bottle. This will cost you, in some states, a nickel. Okay. <laughs> and then I have some uh, red water. And, Linda, I'm going to ask you to pour the red water right in top here. So I'm going to hold the funnel. Don't get nervous, Linda. Don't get nervous. All right. Keep going. Oh, that's mo You've done this before. Have you ever made one of these before? No. Oh, okay. This is a new experience. Keep going. Okay. That's good. And then what we have is some regular old cooking oil. This costs about a dollar. And if you want to pour that in until I tell you to. All right. And we're just going to add it in. Do you have to use cooking oil, Steve? Uh, you could use mineral oil. You could use any kind of oil. Because we all know, know that oil and water don't, don't mix. mix. Okay. And it's because of this thing we call density. All right. That's pretty good. All right. Now what you have to do is cap the bottle. And basically you have a dirt cheap version of a wave machine. Now, you could use a little less water, a little more water, but it doesn't matter. So, there you go. Your own wave machine. Thank you. All right, oh, why don't you go off and oh, slide? They'll help you over there. Now, you have a magazine that people can get information on Dirt Cheap Science. What's that address? Well, in fact, it's Dirt Cheap Science is the name of the magazine. It's P.O. Box 226, Bell Rose, New York, 11426. And just send us some stuff. We'll send you the magazine. Stuff. Right. Stuff. Yeah, you know, a letter. A right. letter asking for information. A letter. Okay. Ooh, rockets. Science. Rockets. You know rockets. Everybody loves these rockets, okay? These rockets work on air pressure. And if you push it down, what you're doing is pumping it up. Air The same stuff that what? makes you air, air pressure. pressure. Air pressure. The same, whoa. Oh, leaking, leaking air pressure. Air, leaking air pressure. We're going to put that down. And what I have over here is the ultimate in rockets. This is called the... Spud missile. Wait. Okay. And what we have is a simple old potato here and a piece of pipe. And we're just going to gently put the potato on the end here. And the pipe is a broomstick. A broomstick with some tape wrapped around it. And Molly, you're going to have to get out of the way. Okay. <laughs> okay. We need a countdown. Now, the, what it is is this tube is filled with what right now? Air. Air. And if I shove the plunger in, what should happen? Okay. Here we go. Because Five, four, three. Two, one. Uh -huh. Push. Wow. All right. Now, it, you don't can, aim at it, anybody. No, yeah, you can do some serious damage. Uh, but it can do some fun. I mean, you can blast things up in the air 20, 30 feet. Do it outside. Outside. Don't, don't do it in the oh, living room. Mom's crystal chandelier. All right. All right now, what's this? well, some of the best stuff on the market today is this great slimy, gooey, goppy stuff. I'm going to make my own, okay? And, well, yeah, you can make your own real cheap. You could pay five or six bucks for a box of this stuff, or you can go and get some cornstarch. Regular old cornstarch. And some water. And I put red water in here. And basically make the same thing. Now, this is called a colloidal suspension. Ooh, say that again. I like that one. Colloidal suspension. 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 Now, all that means is it's got a lot of particles in it separated by water. But the cool thing about this, if you... How's that feel, I'm, I'm trying, Steve. I'm trying. Right, here we go. Here we go. Well, I got I'll it. tell you what. You know what's I nice got about it. Now this? I got it. It's a liquid, but if you punch it, it's a solid. Depending on how you hit it, it's either a solid Why or a liquid. Why do that? Well, because the particles are being held together by water, but just barely. So when you squeeze hard, all the particles come together and it acts like a solid. It's got a lot of cornstarch. This has a Why does box cornstarch of cornstarch. Work and something else doesn't. Well, it's because of the chemistry of the cornstarch. So it's, um, you know, a little bit complicated to talk about and right it's now. It's fun too. Yeah, Seems but it's like fun. The dirt cheap it's science is the most not fun. Not doing too well here. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, so Steve, much. it's wonderful it stuff. Okay. Thanks. You've been a great audience. We'll see you next time on KTV. <laughs>